Hey everyone, this is Erica from Ever Educating, and I'm back with another video about icebreakers. And so I have one that I did, you know, a few weeks ago now, and it was part of a series on prepping for teaching the first week of class. And so at this point we're mid-semester, but I noticed when looking at my analytics on YouTube that the video on icebreakers was four times as popular as the next uh, most watched video. And so I realized that even still, at this point in the semester, people are looking for icebreaker activities for their college students. And so in that video, which is actually very short, and I linked it above and below in the description box, I basically talk about making sure you're being inclusive when doing icebreakers. Because the actual examples that I had are included in the free workbook that I linked in that video. And I'll link it in this one too. But since that video is so popular, I thought it'd be helpful to actually, you know, give the examples or some of the examples of the icebreakers I mentioned in that ebook. And so that's what I'm going to focus on in this video. And so the ebook has seven icebreakers, but I'll take a while to explain. So I'm going to do actually my top three in this video. So the first icebreaker that I want to go over is great if you're short on time or if you're just not a creative person, you're not one who wants to have like the fun icebreakers. And that's namesake, okay? So this will work best if you have, you know, a smaller classroom. So I would say 50 students would be the max um, at this point. And basically namesake, it's similar to what it sounds like, right? It's you're going around the room with your students in a snake formation, and they each have to say their name and the name of all the people before them in the snake. So if you have, you know, Josh, he'll say, hi, my name is Josh. All right, the person next to him will say, hi, my name is Christina, and this is Josh. Hi, my name is Matt, this is Christina, and this is Josh, and so on and so forth. So soon enough, they won't remember everybody's name, and so they could ask their classmates for help in saying the names of the people before them. If nobody can remember, obviously that person will say their name instead. But you had them go through the whole classroom, the whole snake, you know, and so you hear the names over and over and over again, right, at least the ones who are going early on. And so it's a way to start remembering your students' names because names are key to getting students to see you as, you know, caring about them, about having that one-to-one -one relationship with them. And at the very end, once they all go, then you're the, the last part of the snake, right, or the head of the snake. And so you will go and say every student's name at that point. And again, if you can't remember them all, they'll still help out, but it can really give you a boost on day one or day two of starting to know what the names of your students are. Right. So you don't want to do this until you actually ask them for their preferred name or nickname. So you want to do that when you're taking attendance at the beginning of class. Um, but I happen to really like this activity because it's simple, you know, it's easy to explain. It's not like a cookie or like really fun one, but it's one that helps with learning an essential part of your students and that's their name. The second icebreaker activity I want to share is either four corners or you can also do it spectrum instead. And so obviously you have to have room in your classroom to do this, to actually move around and have students who are mobile enough to do this. Um, but there is a version, at least of Four Corners, that can be done sitting down. Uh, but first, you know, what's Four Corners? Basically, you have your students in the middle of the room and then you have some kind of topic or question and the Four Corners are each different answers. So for example, you might have in a literature course, you know, what's your favorite genre? Right, and so this corner is the fantasy, sci-fi, supernatural ones. Over here is, you know, mysteries or suspenseful ones or maybe horror. Over here is the realism, right, the contemporary type. And then over here is any of those that did not match, right? And so go to the corner that most closely matches your interest. And so they split up and then you could have a few minutes discussion of, all right, you know, what's your favorite fantasy novel, right? Or what's your favorite horror film? Or, okay, the miscellaneous, what are your favorite genres? And so you got to start talking about a topic related to your class subject. And you have, all right, next question. And then you ask the question and you give them the examples of the four corners. So some will actually stand in between the corners, right? Or right in the middle of the room signify that they're, you know, half and half or they're, you know, split four ways. And so it won't be just perfectly four corners, but this is a way of getting students moving, interacting with each other and getting to know them tied to your subject. Now, another version of this would be doing spectrum, right? And so that would be, for example, you know, 
you can do just things about the student. So, you know, when is your birthday and go into a, a line basically in the order of your birthdays, right? And so you can see who's youngest to oldest, how many June birthdays are there. So you can do it not related to your classroom. But you could also do, you know, how much reading do you do outside of class, right, for fun? And then one side of the spectrum is I never read for fun whatsoever. And the other side is I read a book a week or a day, right? And so you can get into a spectrum of your answers. And so again, in this case, students have to talk even more with each other to get a sense of where they fall on the spectrum. And so it's great for interaction with each other, right, with the classmates, but then also to get a sense of, you know, who you have in this class, how much do they love reading or how much do they hate it, right, writing or whatever it is that you're teaching. So if mobility is an issue with some of your students, then I suggest in the four corners aspect of it, you can still do that sitting down, right? So you can have, you know, they raise their hand for one of the four answers, right? Um, and then as far as it goes with, you know, if they're halfway in between, you might have, you know, are you one, two, three, or four? But then you could also say, are you five? And that's a mix of some of the, the one through four. And then those students can say, oh yeah, I'm a mix between one and three, or I'm a mix between two and four, and whatever the case may be. So that one can be done sitting down, right, if it needs to be. But this is, again, a more active activity that gets you to know your students. And then finally, like I mentioned at the introduction of this video, my favorite icebreaker is class bingo. And so this is a themed bingo game where you come up with, in my case, I usually do 20 prompts. Um, and so each student has a bingo board that's blank of four by five, right, table. So there's 20 blank spaces. Um, and they number the blank spaces one through 20 in any order they want it to be, right? On the board, I project the 20 prompts that are numbered one through 20 as well. And so when I'm teaching children's literature, for example, I could have one, what's your favorite Disney character? Two, what's your favorite Disney villain? Three, what's your favorite Pixar movie? Four, you know, what's your favorite children's book? Five, and then so on and so forth, right? And so I have 20 prompts tied to my topic. And so the students have to go around and they have to ask their classmates, first, what's your name? So you exchange names, right? And then can you fill out one of my squares? Any one that you want, that's obviously still blank. And then they sign their name underneath it. So let's say you have Kara, goes to John and says, you know, let's exchange, I'm Kara, hi, I'm John. And then John fills out the square that's marked number three with his favorite you know, character, right? Um, and then signs his name, John. And then, you know, Kara does the same for John's. And they go off to the next person. And so they have to introduce themselves to nine, well, 20 other classmates, right? Um, or even you could take part as well. You can say, I'm available. And so they can introduce themselves to you too. And so in this way, again, students are starting to talk to each other, but also starting to know each other's names, right? Um, and so if your classroom is small enough, this is, again, an activity you can do. And so in this case, at, at the end, right, so whoever fills it out first calls bingo. Um, they can get a prize if, you know, you want to do it that way. And everybody sits down and you actually just start discussing them, right? So, you know, for question number one, bingo winner, what that person say, right? And like, oh, John said his favorite character is Tigger, right? And anybody agree with that? You know, what are your thoughts on Tigger? You know, who else gave answers to that question, right? What are your other answers? And so you kind of get into this fun discussion about your class topic. So it helps them ease into, all right, yeah, when I'm here in this classroom, this is what I'm discussing. I'm discussing children's literature, right? And now I know at least maybe a handful of my classmates' names, right? I know 20, right, potentially, if they fill out the whole, you know, board. But even if they didn't, they should be able to remember at least one to three of their classmates' names. So it's a start, right? And as for you, you would be walking around and try to, like, listen in to the name, the introductions, so you can start getting down the names as well. Right, so again, this requires mobility when you're students, and I, that's why I had that video before about being inclusive. So I don't always do this activity if I know I have students who have that issue. Um, but here are three activities that you can do as icebreakers with your, with your students. I can do part three where I discuss the other activities that I have in my ebook. If you're interested, let me know in the comments below that you want more icebreaker activity ideas. Um, but for now, I would you know appreciate you clicking the like button if you're gonna use any of these in your own classrooms and subscribing if you wanna have more teaching tips and tools and ideas in the future. So I'll see you next week.